54-man unit. That's what we are. You are done for each other. Go, go, go. And welcome into this week's show. Grand Valley, a big homecoming win over Finley, 52 to 7. The Lakers are now 7 and 1. On our show this week, we're going to look back over the highlights of this game and hear from head coach Matt Mitchell and, of course, some of the players. Yes, our player profile on, is on senior guard around. Brandon Revenberg. Plus, we're going to take you behind the scenes in a special feature on former Laker coaching great Chuck Martin. It's all ahead here on GVSU Football Weekly. Let's get started. Wear them out. I told you this uh, on Thursday. You got to rip it from them. You got to be aggressive. You got to take it. We're going to make aggressive calls. Let's go. 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 let us Bard Williams going to throw a man open over the middle. It's complete to the 36-yard line, and that is a catch that's made out there by who else but Jamie Potts. Talk about the tackler here after the play for Finley on that last one, and this is a different look, and look out! Marty Carter all the way down to the 27-yard line. That's a huge pickup for Grand Valley. It's first and 15 for the Lakers. Finley trying with some heat. Grand Valley picks it up. Williams got it off, and it's a touchdown to Nick Dotson. What a ball by Williams right as he was about to be hit. And the true freshman Nick Dotson gets Grand Valley on the board. It's just third and short. And they're going to try to run it here, and they're not going to get it. Tally. Doubting their ability to run the ball without that kind of a play. Here's a ball to Jamie Potts again, down to the 25. It's a pickup of 18. This is the safety not being able to break and make the read as well. Grand Valley's going deep. This is going to be a problem for somebody, and it's for Finley. Matt Williams. Oh, the defensive back thought he had that one measured. You got a feel for Tavon yeah. Morton. He was out there. He's going, oh, here it is, here it is, and all of a sudden over his head. A miraculous recovery, at least for one more play. We'll find out what he's got. He's going to hand it off. They are not going to make it on no. third down. They tried to run up the middle again. He does a great job of lowering his pad level and creating that trap situation. Well, they shake it out to Spencer this time, and Kirk makes a good move here. He got north and south much quicker there. Picked up about nine on the play. He did a great job. Kind of interesting. He's in there right now for the other corner. Grand Valley does not get Jervis, but he finally falls down. Williams has time this time. He's got him. It's a jump ball for Matt Williams. He's caught it. Oh, boy. What a catch in front of Tavon Morton yeah. for Matt Williams. And he's just that kind of player. This kid, a lot like Jamie Potts. 5'10 against 6'2. A little shovel to Kirk Spencer. He's got some room. Ducks inside. That's it, Kirk Spencer. Dotson, who has a touchdown tonight. They'll probably go back to Spencer again. No, instead, they're going to go pump and up. And this is oh, Jamie boy. Potts, who is wide open. He's going to walk it into the end zone. Oh, oh, oh. What little a hip shake there on Aaron Ivory. And you knew they weren't going to bring Jamie Potts down. It's a great call for Tim Morrison and the Lakers, who are now up 20 to nothing. But Grand Valley trusting their defensive backs by putting a lot of pressure. Grand Valley again, with they nine do it again. The box, sets an yeah. interception. Wow. Again, the same play as last time, bringing the heat, bringing them going man to man on the outside. Deflection from the wide receiver and a huge interception for Grand Valley. I think it's Aaron Cox. Yeah. Matt Williams going up top. Jamie Potts, first down inside the 30. Upside, he is wide to the right. Williams wide to the left. Slot receivers looking toward Potts in the seam. Of course, he's going to catch it. Now they move him into a different position. He's going to run to the outside. He's going to get to the flag this time. It's a Grand Valley touchdown with under a minute remaining. And the Lakers move on top on homecoming by the score of 27 to nothing. Coming up next, second half highlights as the Lakers lead 28-0 at halftime. This is GVSU Football Weekly. We'll be right back. 
If you sign up for DirecTV's latest deal, prepare to be blindsided. Because they'll double your rate before you know it. And you'll find you're locked into a two-year contract that could cost you over 3,000 bucks. That's why the smart choice is Xfinity. You can see all the best action in football all season long. With no surprises. Don't get blindsided by DirecTV. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. At Metro Health, we don't see patients, we see people. And when it comes to their health care, there's one thing we're all working toward, helping them feel better. Better summers, better dances, better retirements, and better roads ahead. This is what we want for every person we see every day. Better. Metro Health. Better all around. And welcome back. Well, the Lakers hold a 28-0 lead over Finley at halftime. Grand Valley will get the ball first and continue their strong play. Jamie Potts on to kick it away for Grand Valley, which picked up a couple of first downs here to start this drive, actually one. Jamie Potts is going to fake. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. This could be huge. Potts needs to be the man. Got through the hole. He's going to score on a fake punt. Wow. Amazing. What a call, what a dial-up, and that is not something of recognition by Jamie Potts. That's something that the staff saw, because that's not a call you make on your own, and it was wide open. Third down now for Bard Williams, throwing the out. They Ooh. jumped the route. It's still going to be a Grand Valley first down. Should be with a good that spot. That ball was yeah. caught by Matt Williams. Ooh, actually is being able to fit in that tight window on a big first down for Grand Valley. This is a perfect call right here yeah. to Kirk Spencer. The bubble screen out. Oh. Look out. Oh. Well, we're going to razzle-dazzle it a little bit and maybe get 10 on the play, but he took quite a knock at the end of that one being pursued there by the defender. That's Carter. He hasn't turned. Yes, it is Marty Carter in 34. He's going to probably get it here on short yardage, and look at him go. This guy has got to be someone they're thinking about yeah. utilizing a little bit more often because he runs with such ease, and he's he fresh right now, which is such an advantage when you're a running back second and short. Spencer's back in. Spencer's going to get it and going to counter back to the left side. They block the edge. Great downfield block by Justice Wright. One man to beat. Spencer oh. inside the five. Good downfield blocking by not only Joe Robbins, but Justice Wright, yeah. who hasn't been targeted yet on the outside. Grand Valley looking to go. Oh, he Got had him. right in the middle, but he might get out of this. Oh, could he score it from here? Wait for your block. He does. <laughs> he made it hard. I think he got in. Did he or did he not? Oh, oh, it looks like they call. threw the bag. It might have fumbled and it might have been a touchback. Got within six inches of the goal line and then gave it away. Well, you put pressure on the defense who's played really, really good football as of late, but. Oh, that's grounding yeah. right there. No <laughs> question about it. it. It doesn't matter if he's outside the pocket there. If he throws it sideways. You got to get of beyond bounds. the line of script. Great That's coverage. Incomplete there. Oh, we'll see where Grand Valley goes. They're going to bubble it out here to Dodson. Dodson oh, makes man. a quick move wow. and a beautiful run for the first down. Marty Carter back in the game. Will we see him? Instead, they're going to throw in the flat oh. to Matt Williams, who's wide open. Just get all you can and get out of bounds. It's a big, big gain for the Lakers. Grand Valley going to shovel it to Spencer. Boy, there's some blocking being done down there. Marty Carter got locked up with a guy and 13 minutes left in this one. Grand Valley cruising at the moment, 35 to 7. They're looking to throw it on top. There is Jamie Potts, and there is another nice. Laker touchdown. Yeah. One guy who's gotten a good long run out tonight is going to be involved maybe in this play. If there's not a sack, the ball's down. Grand Valley grabs oh. it, gets a score. 
<laughs> for the Lakers, and the guy that got it for Grand Valley is Dylan Carroll, <laughs> who's hardly played tonight. <laughs> How about that? A rip and run, and the Lakers move it out to 48 to seven. Fourth in a yard, a five foot nine inch, 240 pound back is in the game, and if he doesn't get it. Oh, he didn't get it. get it. I was going to say, I meant the ball. Yeah. He's not going to get it. He's not going to get the first down either. Grand Valley and their defense knew that they were getting it, led by right there. Jacob Howe does a great job of knifing in there and making the first hit and allowing his teammates to come in and force the turnover on downs. Great job by Grand Valley's defense again. Not only the first unit, but the second unit coming up big and throw it. But Right here, a base defense. They're going to continue to run the football. Holly's going to hand it off this time, and look at this. Breaking into the secondary. A chance to take it to the house. Inside the five. Now he went out of bounds, I believe. What a great run there by Ben Hutch. Now Jami steps up. He identifies who he thinks is going to be the blitzing linebacker here. He's going to run the football. Can he get there? Oh, what a I think leap. he did. He did, did he not step out, out. I think he got it. Nobody wants to make the call. Oh, what a cop out this is. Nobody makes a call here. His first collegiate touchdown. Grand Valley is going to be merciful here. They send Skipper on to get a field goal. He drills it right on through to make it 52 to 7 with 99 seconds left in this one. to be a smartphone and what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time with xfinity voice you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone caller id on your tv and even text messaging all for a low price start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to xfinity voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months call 1-800-XFINITY today Almost done. Now you can pay your bill, manage your appointments, and check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account, available on any device. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge week for us, obviously. You know, Ashland's undefeated, and uh, we're going in there to play a really big game at Ashland, so it's going to be a big test for our team. And, you know, I know the guys on our team are excited, and uh, we're going to get after it and practice on Tuesday and, and be ready to play on Saturday. You know, it's just going to be a big one. We're 4-0 in October. Our goal is to get 5-0, and and we just got to go out and play harder on Saturday. Well, it was perhaps Grand Valley's best overall performance for their offense, defense, and special teams in the same game. Let's hear now from head coach Matt Mitchell. They, they come in as the most prolific offense in the, in the, in the league. I have you know, 500 yards, almost 40 points a game. You guys hold them to seven points and 237 yards. Yeah, he, great job by our defensive staff and our defensive players. You know, um, I thought we controlled the line of scrimmage all night. They have barely had any run, running yardage. And uh, we got after the quarterback. You know, stat sheet says, uh, you know, six sacks, which is extremely impressive. But I also thought, you know, put a lot of hits on him. When he got the ball off, he was, he was getting hit. So... Uh, he felt it. I think their coaching staff felt it, and it had an effect on the flow and the rhythm of their offense, uh, the pressure we were getting on the quarterback. Uh, you guys just stop right away, and then you go on. Uh, Bart hits Nick Dodson, 32-yard touchdown pass. Really got in the flow early, the 84-yard drive. Really picked things up offensively. Yeah, and I think one of the things that was really big was uh, – you know, last two weeks we haven't won the coin flip. We won the coin flip tonight, and that allowed us to defer. And they took the ball, and then we kicked with the wind. And I wanted to get off to a fast start, and that's why I chose the win. So we get the three and out immediately, and then we uh, go right down the field offensively. And you know, Bart Williams finds a true freshman. You know, it's sophomore hooking up with a freshman. 
uh, for the touchdown catch. And, uh, you know, the three and out in defense created a lot of uh, energy for the defense and then getting that touchdown on offense. And that was an important start. You know, the last few games, we haven't really started great. And I think it was really important that we got off to that good start. Right before the end of the half, you get a touchdown with Kurt Spencer, uh, takes it in a two yard run. Knowing that you get the ball, that's got to be a big momentum push. Uh, scoring right for the half. Yeah, it was huge. Um, you know, for us to get that, uh, you know, the score to twenty-one nothing, and then, uh, you know, I believe we got the next one to get to twenty-eight off a pick. You know, got that off the turnover, and we got aggressive and got down there. And, um, you know, our defense just kept playing and, and 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 kept putting us in a position. So to be up twenty-eight nothing at half, heading to the locker room, know you're getting the ball in the second half, was huge for us against a good football team. Uh, at the same time, at halftime, we weren't. Uh, you know, obviously we're happy with our defensive performance. We're real happy with you know offense. We just felt like. Uh, they never st stopped us. We stopped ourselves. And we got on our offense pretty good about you know, controlling line of scrimmage better and not shooting ourselves in the foot with stupid penalties and drop balls and a few other things. And, um, you know, so we wanted to go out and play a little bit more effective in the second half. But anytime you're up, you know, four scores at halftime, it's a big deal. You get the ball to open the second half. Looks like you're going to have to punt. And then you, you pull out the fake punt uh, that pops takes six, 60 yards for a touchdown. What did you see in that? Uh, you know, we would we'd had that uh, based on tape. It was something I saw on tape, and we kind of had that scheme ready to go. And they were they were doing what I thought. We had to punt a few times in the first half, and I saw it. And we made a little bit of adjustment, but. Uh, for me, more than anything else, uh, I did not want to allow Finley to have any momentum, you know, and uh, I just felt like we had a couple a couple series, you know, it was just kind of back and forth. Our defense had been out there a little bit, and I just kind of felt on the sideline like this would be a good opportunity to call this thing, and they were backed up, and they put their team on, and we blocked it up extremely well, and uh, Potts does a great job. Never would have thought when we put that in on Wednesday, it goes for a touch, but uh, he made some guys miss, and we blocked the things up, and that was uh, that, that kind of got – um, the juice going again, the momentum, our sidelines got energized, and uh, that definitely helped us that second half. So that's up the matchup with Ashland. Obviously, you, uh, they won uh, on Saturday, so they could come in undefeated. Um, just talk a little bit about the mentality moving that forward. Well, you know, it's going to be a tough test going down there. We got, um, you know, play out Ashland, but, um, you know, I, I would say that this team right now. Um, has a lot of confidence. You know, we have a lot of confidence in offense, defense, and special teams. And a lot of coaches have confidence in players. Players have, co uh, you know, co uh, confidence in our coaching staff too. You can tell that on the sideline that they really uh, believe in you know what we're doing. So um, we'll get in on tape. I, I still think there's some things offensively we left out there that we'll try to get cleaned up. You know, and we'll attempt to try to get better at this week. But uh, you know, we're pretty healthy. Knock on wood. And um, you know, we'll be we'll be prepared. We'll be down there and and uh, ready to get after them. Coming up after the break, our player profile feature on senior guard Brandon Revenberg. This is GVSU Football Weekly. We'll be right back. Metro Health, we don't see patients, we see people. And when it comes to their health care, there's one thing we're all working toward, helping them feel better. Better summers, better dances, better retirements, and better roads ahead. This is what we want for every person we see every day. Better. Metro Health. Better all around. You learn something every single day at Grand Valley State University about who you are and who you can become, about where you've been and where you're going, about your goals and how to accomplish them. At the end of the day, you know what you want from life. Find it within yourself. Find it within Grand Valley State University. And welcome back. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Grand Valley's offensive line has had a great season, and one of the key leaders of this group is senior offensive guard Brandon Revenberg. Let's have a look. I went to a bunch of kind of summer camps all around here in Michigan. 
And then uh, I think they showed some interest in me. They kind of asked me to get some film up. You no, know, they liked that. Came back and visited again, and then uh, sure enough later I got the offer. Brandon Revenberg is a key offensive lineman for the Lakers, but Revenberg wasn't always playing on the offensive side of the ball. All right, well, I mean, I came here thinking I was going to play defensive line, and before I even come here, they just tell me I'm going to O-line. So, I mean, that kind of shook me up a bit because I thought deep down, you know, I'm still a defensive lineman. And that first year, that transition was, it was kind of difficult. But, I mean, I really began to, to love just being an offensive lineman, you know, especially Coach Morrison helping me out, you know. I definitely had to work on my technique a lot, and just over time, it's progressed. Revenberg and fellow O-lineman and friend Jim Walsh take a pregame lap before every game. The past four years we've been doing it, just kind of once we started playing, so. How'd, how'd they get started? <laughs> Honestly, I think we just kind of hit a lap the one time before a game, kind of feel the turf, and it just became a tradition for us. I don't even think we say more than a couple words. We just kind of listen to music, just get locked in, walk around, get ready for the game. There have been many highs for Revenberg with the Laker football team, and his favorite memory dates back to the 2013 season. Uh, definitely when we met to the semifinals and playoffs. I mean, that year, uh, we had some close games, you know, we beat Saginaw to make it to the playoffs, and then we beat him again to continue further in, and I mean, it was great. Revenberg started his playing career in Canada. Unbeknownst to most, there are some key differences in the way both games are played. In Canadian football, our field's uh, 10 yards longer. It's, uh, I believe it's wider as well. And then our goal posts are actually set right on the goal line. I mean, we had plays where, you know, you had like the guard, center, goal post, tackle. <laughs> Of course, there will be a few parts of GV football that Revenberg will sincerely miss. Um, just being surrounded by the guys I love, you know. You come out here, have fun every single day. So, that'll be the biggest part. I mean, you know, we come in here every day before practice, just kind of joke around, have a good time, and then uh, kind of gear up and get ready, locked in, so. Yeah, I mean, it went by real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Rev, just gave me, Rev just gave me a five-word answer. My bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, real quick. What are you looking you for? You just gave a five-word answer. And for today's Laker Lightning Round, the pride of Rockford, Michigan, Kyle Short. Kyle, you ready? I'm ready. Player on the team most like you? Garrett Cunha. Favorite part of camp? Tiny beds and Kistler. First car you ever drove? A Jeep. Do you have a celebrity crush, and if so, who is it? Jennifer Aniston. Best dancer on the team? Kirk Spencer. Favorite movie? Friday Night Lights. Best singer on the team? Marty. Favorite breakfast meal, and what is it? Uh, French toast. Get up early or sleep in? Sleep in. Favorite thing to do outside of football? Probably play basketball. Best nickname on the team, and who has it? Big Benjamin Wallen with beef. The funniest player on the team? Marty Carter. Hardest hitter? Uh, David Talley. Favorite TV show? Friday Night Lights. Best dresser? Joe, Joe Robbins. Worst dresser on the team? Uh, Jacob Stutter. Favorite food? Go with a uh, nice pizza. Best moment at Grand Valley? My first eligible game traveling to Azusa. Best part about playing football at Grand Valley? The games. And that's Kyle Short with today's Laker Lightning Round. Thanks, Kyle. Stay with us. Coming up next, our special feature on Laker coaching great Chuck Martin. You're watching GVSU Football Weekly. Nice to meet you guys. I have these two laptops. We're gonna each download a TV show. I'm gonna download it on Xfinity, and you guys are gonna download it with AT&T Uverse. And we're gonna see who goes faster. Go. Well, this is a no-brainer so far. How's AT&T doing? Struggling. I'm ready to go. We'll wait for you guys. Looks like we're gonna be waiting for a while. Don't let Uverse slow you down. Upgrade to an Xfinity X1 Triple Play from Comcast and save when you bundle. See for yourself. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. At Metro Health, we don't see patients, we see people. And when it comes to their health care, there's one thing we're all working toward, helping them feel better. 
better summers, better dances, better retirements, and better roads ahead. This is what we want for every person we see every day. Better Metro Health. Better all around. And welcome back to GVSU Football Weekly. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Chuck Martin is one of the great coaches in Laker football history, and he's the subject of this week's special feature. Chuck Martin was a legendary coach for the GVSU Lakers in the 2000s. He compiled a 74-7 record for GVSU during his time as head coach from 2004 until 2009. During Martin's time as head coach, he led the Lakers to two national championships in 2005 and 2006 and a national championship berth in 2009. Last weekend, Martin was inducted into the GVSU Sports Hall of Fame, and he considers the honor to be special. Yeah, it's a, obviously any time you get an honor bestowed upon you like this, it's a great thing, but being here for a decade uh, and being part of Grand Valley for a decade, it makes it even more special. It's, it's an incredible place. Every time you get here, it's grown more and more. There's new incredible buildings or new incredible dorms or new incredible something, uh, but also just what this place has meant to me and my family, not only my time here, but also for the rest of our lives, what Grand Valley has done for us is unbelievable. Then the last piece is just all the friends that we have made through the years that are still some of our closest friends are people that we met here at Grand Valley. So it's 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 a crazy great night for me and my family, and it's, it's we're very excited to be here and see a lot of the people that we love so much. When Martin left the Lakers after the 2009 season, he reunited with former GVSU head coach Brian Kelly at Notre Dame. Martin took over as the defensive backs coach for the Irish, which was a transition, especially coming from a head coaching job with Grand Valley. Well, the thing in our profession, anytime you move, you get new experiences. Anytime you do a different job, you get new experience. So you go from assistant to a head coach at Grand Valley. Then I went to the secondary coach at Notre Dame for two years. Then I went to the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame two years and back to being a head coach. So all those experiences are valuable. You grow every year, even if you keep the same job. But I've been kind of fortunate in my career that I've kind of bounced around in different positions and different sides of the ball. So that's, that's really helped me continue to grow as a coach. And that, that's always a goal. Sometimes when you move, the great thing about movement is it's a new experience and you get to grow a lot as a player and a person and as a coach. In 2014, Chuck Martin took over as the head football coach at Miami of Ohio in the MAC. His experience at Grand Valley and Notre Dame has certainly helped as he attempts to turn around the Miami football program. Martin is trusting the process as he coaches the Red Hawks. Um, for me, it wasn't as big a deal because I really don't follow the media, which everyone does, and coaches tell you they don't, but they do. They know everything. Every I went to Notre Dame, and I'd hear people talking in the offense. You know, our first couple years when we had a couple tough losses, I'd hear people in the office, and they talk about what they're saying about us, and I just laugh like, I just go to work and keep my head down and do my job, and that's always how I've been. And I don't. It's it's the same thing at Miami right now. I'm sure there's people that think we're doing a halfway decent job because they understand what we took over, but I'm sure the majority of the people think what the heck's going on. We brought this staff in to get this thing turned around. They haven't turned around yet. And we know in our profession it's turned around right now or we're looking for somebody else. So, but to me, I don't, I don't pay. I, I just go to work and do my job and, and believe in what we're doing and stick with the process. So for me, not as big a deal. It was a big deal for a lot of people at Notre Dame because every single step is magnified. But to me, it's like focus on what you can control. And we all believe in that and, and just keep working hard and, and keep doing it the right way and you'll have success. And that'll do it for this week's show as Grand Valley moves to seven and one overall and they've won five straight. Grand Valley on the road in a big battle next week in Ashland, Ohio. I'll be back with highlights of that. Plus, we'll get the coaching reaction Action and you'll hear from some of the players. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Thanks for watching GVSU Football Weekly. Have a great week, everybody. What if a home phone could also be a smartphone? And what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time? With Xfinity Voice, you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone, caller ID on your TV, and even text messaging, all for a low price. 
Start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to Xfinity Voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. I'm almost done. Now you can pay your bill, manage your appointments, and check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account, available on any device.